what do you think is the timeline to solve the problem of autonomous driving? That's still in part an open question. Yeah, I think the tough thing with timelines of self-driving, obviously, is that no one has created self-driving. Yeah. So <laughs> it's not like, what do you think is a timeline to build this bridge? Well, we've built a million bridges before. Here's how long that takes. It's, it, you know, it's uh, no one has built autonomy. It's not obvious. Uh, some parts turn out to be much easier than others. So it's really hard to forecast. You do your best based on trend lines and so on and based on intuition. But that's why fundamentally it's just really hard to forecast this. No one has so even it. still, like being inside of it, it's hard yeah. to uh, to do. Yes, some things turn out to be much harder, and some things turn out to be much easier. Do you try to avoid making forecasts? Because like Elon doesn't avoid them, right? And heads of car companies in the past have not avoided it either. Mm. Uh, Ford and other places have made predictions that we're going to solve a level four driving by like 2020, 2021, whatever. Mm -hmm. And now they all kind of backtrack on that prediction. Are you as a as an AI person? Do you for yourself privately make predictions, or do they get in the way of like your actual ability to think about a thing? Yeah, I would say like what's easy to say is that this problem is tractable, and that's an easy prediction to make. It's tractable. So it's, it's going to work. Yes, it's just really hard. Some things turn out to be harder, and uh, some things turn out to be easier. Uh, so, uh, but it's it definitely feels tractable, and it feels like. At least the team at Tesla, which is what I saw internally, is definitely on track to that. How do you form a uh, strong representation that allows you to make a prediction about tractability? So, like you're the leader of a lot, a lot of humans, you have to kind of say this is actually possible. Like, wh yeah. how do you build up that intuition? It doesn't have to be even driving; it could be other tasks. It right. could be. Um, and I, I want to, what difficult tasks did you work on in your life? I mean, classification, ach achieving certain, just on ImageNet, certain yeah. level of superhuman level performance. Yeah, expert intuition. It's just intuition, it's belief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so just like thinking about it long enough, like studying, looking at sample data, like you said, driving. Uh, my intuition is really flawed on this. Like I don't have a good intuition about tractability. It, it could be either, it could be anything, it could be, solvable like uh you know the driving task could could be simplified into something quite trivial like uh the solution to the problem would be quite trivial and at scale more and more cars driving perfectly might make the problem much easier like yeah the, the more cars you have driving and like people learn how to drive correctly not correctly but in a way that's more optimal for a uh, heterogeneous system of autonomous and semi-autonomous right. and manually driven cars, that could change stuff. Then again, also I've spent a ridiculous number of hours just staring at pedestrians crossing streets, <laughs> and thinking about humans. And it feels like the way we use our eye contact, it sends really strong signals and there's certain quirks and edge cases of behavior. And of course, a lot of the fatalities that happen have to do with drunk driving and, um, both on the pedestrian side and the driver's side. So there's that problem of driving at night and all that kind of, yep. so I wonder, you know, it's like the space of possible solution to autonomous driving includes so many human factor issues that it's almost impossible to predict. It, there could yep. be super clean, nice solutions. Yeah, I would say definitely like to use a game analogy, there's some fog of war, yeah. uh, but you definitely also see the frontier of improvement. Yeah. And you can measure historically how much you've made progress. And I think, for example, at least what I've seen in uh, roughly five years at Tesla, when I joined, it barely kept lane <laughs> on the highway. I think going up from Palo Alto to SF was like three or four interventions. Anytime the road would do anything geometrically or turn too much, it would just like not work. And so going from that to like a pretty competent system in five years and seeing what happens also under the hood uh, and what the scale at which the team is operating now with respect to data and compute and everything else, uh, it's just a uh, massive progress. So, so it's, uh, you're climbing a mountain and yes. it's fog, but you're making a lot of progress. It's fog, so you're making progress and you see what the next directions are. And you're looking at some of the remaining challenges and they're not like, uh, they're not perturbing you and they're not changing your philosophy and you're not contorting yourself. You're like, actually, these are the things that we still need to do. Yeah, the fundamental components of solving the problem seem to be there from yes. the data engine to the compute yes. to the, the compute on the car to the compute for yes. the training, all that kind of stuff.